Big week in the world of technology. RIM is holding its annual BlackBerry World event, but that didn't stop its share price from reaching a nine-year low. Elias Makos is here. So what did RIM announce this week? Well, uh, they announced a, uh, a developer version of their next BlackBerry. BlackBerry 10 is their next software, uh, and they're giving their developers a test version of the product. It looks very much like an iPhone, uh, very similar to it. Um, and, you know, this is a company that is already late in this game, uh, and, there, and the reason why the, sh the share price went down is because after this event, you know, there's no, there was really no hope of, of some surprise announcement that things are going to come earlier. So we're still looking at a late 2012 time frame for their next latest and greatest product, uh, and that might be too late, you know. So uh, the product they showed has a touch screen. Uh, the next day after they showed the touch screen, uh, the CEO of, of RIM got pestered the questions, what happened to the keyboard? What happened to the keyboard? He said, oh, the keyboard's staying. So we're looking at a RIM that's going to continue to have multiple interfaces and multiple designs for their phones uh, and and that's hard the touch screen has won let's face mm -hmm. it you know like VHS and Betamax yeah. and Blu-ray I mean the touch screen won this war touch screens are everywhere uh, and RIM still can't make that tough decision to abandon the keyboard so even the keyboard argument bears little weight yeah I, I think in this day it, the, you know the keyboard's got to go and RIM did address uh, the app issue though that's right so what they've told their developers is that if they make an app for BlackBerry 10 and if they don't make $10,000 in the first year of selling that app, they will give them the difference. So you're sort of guaranteeing your developers, hey, make an app, we'll give you $10,000. Uh, and that may be enough to get some apps on that store because that's going to be very important. When they launch this new software, BlackBerry 10, it has to have apps. But you've said that this, you feel this is a smoke screen. I, you know what, I think this is, you know, instead of a touch screen, it's a, it's a smoke <laughs> screen. Uh, I think behind the scenes, they are preparing for a change of this company. I don't, I don't think RIM's going to be in the handset business. I think there's still plenty of stuff they can do, like security software and, and enterprise uh, encrypted uh, messaging. Uh, so they still have some, some value. But I think in the handset business, eventually we're going to see them go, and I think they're preparing for that. And this is something that caught a lot of people's uh, eyes this week, uh, switching gears here. Ath Amazon, yeah. Netflix. Yeah. Getting into the the, uh, the television production business. Yeah, so we'd heard for a while that Netflix, you know, is, uh, had had released a show called Lillehammer, which is a joint production with uh, uh, with uh, a Norwegian company. And next year, Arrested Development, one of the best yeah. comedy shows ever, is, show. is coming back uh, to Netflix. And Amazon this week said, "Hey, we are looking for your suggestions for children's television and comedy shows." for its streaming service in the U.S. Uh, you know, this is uh, really interesting because it's clear YouTube is also doing more in professional content and starting an advertising campaign to support it. Uh, everyone is getting into this streaming video because they know in the future we're going to be getting most of our video streaming over the Internet, and they want to be a part of that. Yeah, but you say... And obviously, I guess it is a yeah. bad thing for people who just want to watch the old boob tube. You know, but I, yeah, and I, I don't like, the reason I don't like this is because, you know, I'm someone who spends $8 a month for Netflix, and, you know, Amazon's content isn't available in Canada yet. Um, but, you know, when that happens, when that comes, and, you know, there's Hulu in the States, they charge yeah. another $8. I mean, are we really looking at a future where someone has to navigate and subscribe to three, four separate packages mm -hmm. over the Internet to get all the content they want when they just want one show from here, one, sh one show from here? That's just going to promote piracy. Uh, so I think, you know, whatever happens, at the end of the day, they're going to have to come together to make it easy for consumers. And three separate subscriptions with three separate companies is a non-starter for most people. All right. And very quickly, the latest in the, uh, the mobile phone wars. Yeah. Big news out of Samsung. Yeah. So Samsung released a new phone uh, yesterday, uh, the Samsung Galaxy S3. It's their latest flagship. Uh, the interesting thing here is that in the, in the mobile phone market, there's two companies that make 99% of the profit. Apple makes 73% of the profit. Samsung makes 26% of the profit. Uh, and this is a great play for Samsung. They're really differentiating themselves from all the other Android phones. It has turned, uh, Samsung has successfully turned the smartphone wars from a Apple versus Android war to an Apple versus Samsung war. Very smart for them. All right, thank you very much. Elias Magos, thanks for being here. You're welcome.